you always want to have proper equipment. Okay. To remove the resistor, I'd seen Dave do this in a video. It seemed to make sense to me. So. Next up, the Hold Peak HP760H. <laughs> Looks like a hazardous condition to me. Yeah, somebody could get hurt with this meter. You can smell it burning in here. Here we have the Southwire 12070T. Ready? <laughs> that one had the best bounce so far. So here's the new Bryman. Behind it you can see my 10x attenuator. I'm going to use this to do some high voltage measurements. And below that you can see the new transient generator. And to the left of this is an add-on transient generator. You can see the two bus bars sitting underneath here. This generator runs in parallel with the new one. And we got a couple of uh, brand new light bulbs here that we're going to use for testing this out. And my chicken stick here. You can see there's a small LED in the end of this here. There's a resistor network up in here I use to uh, discharge these generators. So this new generator, my plan is uh, to basically simulate a half of a cycle of uh, typical household wiring. A typical home for the United States is a 220 feed and could have as much as a 200 amp service. So if we look at uh, 200 amps at 220 volts, here we use 60 hertz, so 8.333 milliseconds. Uh, it works out to just shy of 400 joules for a half a cycle. My plan with this generator is eventually to go up to about 500 joules. Um, it's currently set for much lower. I thought we'd just uh, kind of show how this thing works. So for now, let's just run it with uh, the single generator and then we'll go ahead and turn on the second one and you can get an idea of what this will do to a light bulb and the light bulb by itself should survive this hopefully it survived that, yeah it looks like it's still intact so the idea with this is uh, this generator would output a high voltage transient this will hopefully break down the internals of whatever device I'm testing and once that breaks down the device then provides a low impedance path for this second generator uh, so now all I'm going to do is re-enable this generator so this is the same setting on here and uh, we should supply a pretty high energy pulse into this bulb so uh, let's just go ahead and turn it on charging and there it goes and if we look at the uh, light bulb right now the filament is uh, basically vaporized this meter is from our previous testing this is one of the ones that 5KY had sent to me this is a circuit test DMR6550 if you don't remember this meter, it had uh, survived uh, even up to 6,000 volts on the inputs. I couldn't fully damage the meter. There's a trace inside of this that uh, routes up and it goes up to the selector switch in this area and you'll see a little bit of discharge through these two vias here. And it's just basically a trace right around the selector switch in this area that arcs over. 
but I could never uh, do more damage to this meter because uh, um, that breakdown point actually quenched the uh, arc enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this without the new generator. Of course, it's attached. It's just not going to be armed. And uh, let's take a look at uh, how this thing was breaking down. And you can see right up in this area here is where it breaks down at. And again, that's on the bottom side of the board. I can't really show that to you because of the, uh, the way the terminals are attached on this meter. Okay, so I've turned on the new generator. We'll go ahead and turn on the primary generator. And let's just see what happens. I thought we'd go ahead and look at the damage that that transient caused. So here's some pictures of what the meter looked like after I damaged it with the original generator. This is the input pin. This is the common. Here's your high voltage resistor. little PTC down here. These two are connected directly to each other. And we can see that this uh, trace comes all the way up around into this leg of the selector switch and then what ends up happening is this very corner tip arcs over here to the common point which is this area here it's eroding this part of the switch and this is why we're seeing the these two vias light up so I doubt that that's an intended spark gap but uh, that's basically what it's functioning as. So looking at the meter now, this is after one transient with the new generator. Ooh. And you can see the black char here. And we are looking at the back side of the board. So again, this is the area that it was arcing to, but you can see what's happened now is it's completely vaporized that trace and the trace next to it and some of the trace where the two vias are. So again, that's a fairly low energy hit that I hit it with. <clears throat> I have no plans to crank that thing up just yet. I've got some new parts for it on order that can actually handle some higher currents and until I get all that in place I can't really run the generator very high so uh, but it does look pretty promising at least the trigger mechanism works I gotta build a case and stuff for it it's kinda a hazard sitting out in the open right now uh, again I just cover it with a towel in case something does come apart I've got something there to kinda catch some of the fragments but uh, so stay tuned we'll do some new videos once this generator is done and Hopefully here we can cause a little bit more damage than this, but this is a good start.